Morning, everybody. Welcome to another Knife 911. Apologize for the camera shape with the mount steadies. This time, we're going to be talking about this guy, the Medford Praetorian. This version came from DLT Trading only a few days ago. It's an S90V. And the 911 on this guy is that it's overbuilt, super tough, opens cars like cans. Go ahead, do your worst. Just try breaking it. It will survive most apocalypses, uh, but don't disassemble it, or Greg Medford will know and find you. It's not a knife. It's a wedge tool with a sharpened edge. That's really the 911 on this guy. The stats are pretty simple. It's almost 9 inches, 227 millimeters overall length. Closed, it's 5 and a quarter, or 133 mils. It's 3.75 inches, or 95 mils of blade. The stock on this guy is 19 thousandths of an inch or 4.83 millimeters so very very thick it weighs 9.3 ounces so a little over half a pound 263.6 grams and it's right hand tip up carry configuration only so the intake my first impression of this guy is solidity and what I mean by that is when it's closed even when the blade is at half travel at no time does this thing give you the impression that it's anything other than one solid piece? So, open or closed, play feels like an impossibility. The action is glass smooth, but it's it was very, very stiff when I got it new. It was really quite difficult to open it, and it's still, still a little challenge to get it shut to move the lock bar. And it has gotten easier the more I use it. But this is never going to be a flicky knife. Even if it were, the weight of the blade would never really allow flickiness. That's really the most I'm going to get out of it. And I'm fine with that, honestly, for reasons we'll talk about. The bank vault isn't even in it when it <laughs> comes to the solidity of lockup. In fact, every Medford that I've handled um, has this... Thing that I like to call the distinctive trademark Medford thwack, and it's this positive thwacking sound um, when you achieve lockup on this guy. And it's one of those things where it's an audible, audible reinforcement that you've definitely achieved lockup, but every Medford that I've ever handled has it. And I think it's probably one of their distinctive quality indicators. So the blade here is a drop point shaped blade. Tonto is, is more common in, in Medford's lineup, I think. Um, but it's a very carefully machined slab of CPM S90V. You can see from the 9 right there. Right, that this is S90V. If it were a D2, it'd be a D. If it were S35, it'd be an S. If it were CPM 3V, it'd be a 3. Those are the steels that Greg Bedford offers. But it's one of the best blade steels around when heat treated correctly. And it gets quite hard. It's middlingly tough. It's not very tough, but it's middlingly tough. And it's stainless to boot. And I don't know if you, you, you can see see this but these primary bevels right they're so low it could almost you could be you could be almost justified in thinking it was a scandy grind right but it's not it's definitely definitely a saber grind right and it looks as if it were done on maybe a 12 inch contact wheel i'm going to guess because it is a slightly hollow grind i'm not really sure if you're going to be able to pick this up right but it does appear to be slightly hollow The thickness behind the edge, um, they really got it just right. I'm not sure if you're able to take a look and see at the choil right there, right right where the thickness behind the edge is. It's not too thin, not too thick. It's right in that sweet spot, right? I mean, sure, I guess it is a wedge with an edge, right? But it's a wedge with an edge that cuts shockingly well. That's before the factory edge is on this blade, and, and that factory edge is terrific, by the way, really terrific. It's hard to say which factory edge is best between Booze Blades, Bill Koenig, Shira Gorov, 
but they're and, and this guy, but they're all really as good as factory edges that I've ever run across get. Um, having this thing in the hand, and you can see those of you who've handled Medfords before. I mean, I'm filling this handle like completely. This knife was really made for my hand. No, no two ways about it. Um, you know, and that feels really, really good. There are only two knives in my collection that I can say really feel like they were made for my hands. This one and the Shirogorov 111, which is a 4.37 inch blade. So that's a, that's a big knife. Um, so once you get it in the hand, I can start to credit, um, you know, the impression that it will survive any number of apocalypses and open cars like soda cans and all that and hold up while doing it. And I can even start to credit that absurd Achtung and attention letter, not because it's a precision tool and I'm too ham-fisted to do such precision stuff, uh, but because this might just be the first knife that I've gotten, which truly doesn't need to come apart. All right. So it really does give that impression quite well. The only knife in my possession also, which really, the, the 275 pound paracord, which is what I do all my lanyards with, um, I find it works better than 550. It It's more compact. Um, it allows you to, to do different knots without getting too bulky. This thing is just plain too big for 275 cord. It would look stupid dangling off the back of this thing. I'm not even certain 550 cord is going to be big enough, but we'll find out. And even though almost all of the 9.3 ounces of weight, I'm going to guess maybe a little more than two thirds of the 9.3 ounces of weight is up front in this guy, when you get it open and it's actually in your hand, you know, it, it really doesn't feel unbalanced, which is kind of surprising, right? And I think that's due to this, this glass breaker right here, which is, you know, a, a machine ground part. Um, and I don't know if you can see this, if, if the camera will pick it up, but the lanyard hole is actually not round. If you take a look at this, right, it, like, it looks like somebody drilled it and then, you know, sandwiched it in between there, but it's not. There is a flat section right where it meets the right, right where it meets the scale so it's actually not a drilled hole that's an interesting little touch so you know there's only really one gripe i have with this guy and like you know i, I i'm honestly surprised i thought i was going to have more gripes but i'm not um there's only one major gripe that i have right and i don't know if the camera will pick this up Right, but I'm going to try to catch it on film for you. If you take a look inside the machining where it's been tumbled, you can see that the tumbling job did not remove the mill marks. Right? You can still see all the round swirls from the bit, from the, from the bit in the mill machine in there. And on a $700 knife, that's not pretty. That's not pretty at all. So... Just there, you can see those machine marks, and a little bit on the other side of the the other side's not as bad, right? That's the only real gripe I have is that there's just a bit here that's just not finished. But you know, I mean, given the post-apocalyptic tool that it's meant to be, you know, I, I don't know whether it's really an issue or not. But in this price class, I generally generally would expect finishing. So. I only have one other very, very minor gripe, and this may not even be a gripe, because the pocket clip works exceptionally well. I don't know if you can hear this. All right. The pocket clip comes from the factory, not quite contacting the scale. Now, it grips your jeans just fine, right? but generally speaking, most pocket clips do grip the scale a little bit and provide a little bit of retention when it's in your pocket. And I could wish that was the case here. So. The dispatch on this guy, I think, is that it's huge and heavy and absurdly overbuilt and completely unnecessary and thoroughly ridiculous, and it's beautiful. I love it, and I'm really hard put to it to explain why. It just is, and no mistake, really. 
All right, that's nice 911 signing off. Thank you, everybody.